Ooh. What's up, garden friends? Queen Palm's back. You don't know what I'm talking about, the place I store my palm trees. I always feel weird saying that they forgot to bring one of the palm trees when they delivered the others a couple weeks ago. And this one just showed up. Looking pretty good. Only has three fronds on it, which is kind of disappointing, but may look at the, it's cutting freaking huge. I just have the camera out right when the sun's behind it, so that doesn't really help show off its glory. Trunk's starting to get some rings on it. Seemingly healthy from what I can tell so far. Only problem though is that this thing really needs a repot. I dug around online and the next size up is 36 inches and those size pots run around 600 bucks and they're ugly. Like they're not even nice looking pots. They're plastic. They don't, I, don't, I don't think I'm gonna do it. It's a palm tree, it'll be fine. I'll get a lot of that old soil out, put some fresh soil in there and it'll, it'll be okay. It'll be on drip. It'll be more difficult to get this underplanted with all those roots in that pot, but that's not gonna stop me from trying. I'll try and get some stuff under there. One thing though that I need to do that I almost forgot about, well, I want my tripod hold still. What happened here? Before I do anything with it, I have some chains I need to wrap around it and get strapped into over it. Nobody cares about any of that. Oh, over a minute into this video. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Playing with the palm trees. Now that that queen palm's here, I can go ahead and get the mule palms repotted. Have the one over here and then the one over there. I don't remember why I was waiting for the palm tree to be delivered to repot the queen palms, but in my head, they're the mule palms that is to repot these. I don't, there was a reason. I, just, I don't, I don't remember what it was. There was some kind of logic there. I guess maybe I could have done this a couple of weeks ago. Huh. I don't know, like I said, I'm pretty sure at one point there was a reason and it made sense in my head. Here's the other mule palm, right there, looking beautiful. <laughs> so is this queen palm, I don't know, <laughs> it's really, really big. Let's go to the other side of the patio. I might be able to see it better from further away, just like to get a better idea of the scale and the trunk starting to get a curve on it, which looks neat. Uh, I, well, uh, it's pretty backlit. You can see it up there. It's pretty decently tall. It's up above the umbrella. Big. Very big. You having fun with that? That's a piece of sheath I pulled off there to expose a ring. There's one more I could probably get off of it. Where are we, what are we gonna do here? I guess the first thing I should do is get this tied up because the weather is supposed to be kind of iffy here the next few days. It's not gonna be very entertaining. So, oh, I have a package. We can open a package. I'm gonna get this tied up and we can check out what's inside the packages. Packages, I should say. Nice big ones. Full of balls, I'll show you. Uh, look at them. Look, are they beautiful? Very nice. Solar lanterns, I have a few of them already. You guys have seen them. Guys, gals, non-binary pals. There's one right there, one up there, and another one back there behind Cosmo. It went on sale for Memorial Day, and I was like, yeah, I think I, think I need some more of these. Just five more, not that many. The original plan with these, yeah, look at that. That's nice, they have a nice glow to them at nighttime. I wanted to hang them up at in like various heights from the mimosa tree that's down here. There's not much sun over there, so I think the whole solar powered thing would like that would it'd be pointless. So I'm gonna I'll hang them up in places and they'll look nice. That's that's all that is. Alright, back to plant stuff. Sorry, got distracted by pretty shiny things. Queen palm, you know, doesn't look so hot. This is not the most attractive thing to look at. It's strapped up tight in the wire that goes back there another wire that leads up you can't even see it up over there to disguise this i'll probably just like stuff some spanish moss something like that in there but i have to do something if you remember last year if you were subscribed last year every little breeze that there was this whole thing just came tumbling down and it's even bigger this year than it was last year though the canopy is kind of puny but that'll change here within a few weeks it's going to be really full and it's just the slightest wind just take it away and i <laughs> If I'm going to underplant it, which I would like to, then I don't want to have it falling over on top of those things. I want it falling over, period. All right, so what are we, four or five minutes in now? Let me go ahead and tell you what I want to get done this week. I want to get the mule palms repotted. That might actually be a separate video, but I want to get it done and then get the space kind of fixed up here. So there's a few perennials left to go on the ground, just some gingers. Not much left in that regard, but I'd like to start popping some annuals into these. Get the color and the niceness back over in the spot. I don't have a lot of annuals left though. I only have like some impatiens and some petunias, which I need the petunias because I also, along with getting that area done over there, would like to plant up the base of the Alexander palm down there. So I have to make a run to a nursery. I don't know. I really don't feel like it, but 
Might have to. Hey Cosmo, you wanna say hi? <laughs> yeah, yeah, such a sweetheart. I still have some sunlight left, so I could probably get started on this, but nah, we'll pick up in the morning. I wasn't even planning on starting filming yet, but the palm tree got here and so did the lantern things. What are you doing? What's back there? You fart? That's probably what happens. Sometimes he farts and then he attacks his butt like he doesn't understand what happened. Don't worry, he's fine. There's no bugs back there. He's not being bit by anything. He's good, I checked. It's the next day. I've been looking at this spot and trying to figure out what it is exactly that I want to do here. I mean, I, I have an idea. I've known that I wanted to get just color into those blue pots there. I already talked about how there's not really much planting room inside the pot with the queen palm, but I was gonna try and figure something out. The thing is the bamboo has spread in those containers a lot, which is good. That's what I expected it to do. It's been a couple years, so it should be filling in. But the, or I guess this is only the second year. Anyways, whatever goes in there is going to have to be little that grows quickly. I have a few impatience left. There's like a flat and a half here of impatience from the ones I was planting around on the other side of the yard. The thing is the ones that are left over here, they're like, these are the rejects. <laughs> they're the ones I didn't really want to plant because I wasn't crazy about the colors. I like some of them. There's a couple orange ones, some white ones, and some kind of pinky core ones that look good to me. But that would work because with impatience, you can get in there and plug them down and tightly and they'll fill out fairly well, fairly quickly. And the amount of sun over here should be good. I know it looks really sunny right now, but in about 10 days, the sun's going to shift to being more directly above everything and this area gets more shaded. It still gets morning sun, but I had dragon's wings, begonias in these last year and some caladiums. And I think maybe there were some super tunias in there and they didn't get enough light to really do very much. So that tells me that I think impatience would be just fine over here. The thing is that I, I, there are impatience everywhere out here. I went kind of ham with the impatience this year. They're in all the pool containers that go all the way from here all the way around down that Berman back up here. So that wouldn't be a bad thing then to bring them over here into the spot and get some color. And the ones that I have left over there that I just showed you, the ones that I don't use, I'm going to plant back there or like maybe some mixed containers over there or something like that. They won't go to waste. They just basically I'm just debating if I want to go to, I don't, I believe it or not, I don't want to go to the nursery. I would rather just hang out at home and do some yard work, but I don't really like anything I have for these two containers here. And there's a sale at one of the nurseries and I just thinking about maybe picking up some larger size annuals to put underneath that ex Alexander palm. Yeah, that's all this is. Let's let's go to a nursery. Let's see what they have. Oh, I hate pumpkin. You haven't been around in a while. Where are you going? Yeah, that was actually probably smart. You need to stay away from that one. He's crazy, right, pumpkin? All right, where are we going? Where are you going, pumpkin? What? Pumpkin, you say hi? You kiss? You kiss? Yeah, rub your face on the screen, you good girl. Such a sweetheart. Yeah, sorry, Turbo. You cannot go. It's too warm for car rides for you, Pumpkin. I'll be back, Pumpkin. <laughs> sweetheart, such a good girl. Here we are. I'm going to try and make this fast. I'm already I'm seeing a lot of stuff that's sticking out to me. I'm trying to remember. Everything I buy, I gotta plant. Not that I don't enjoy planting the things, but I need to plant up the things that I was already planting on planting. You know what I mean? Hmm. Quick look at the house plants. There they are. And some nice looking succulents. <laughs> Walked around the corner, totally thought those were dead. There we go, this is promising. Do a pink. Maybe one of these. It's gonna have red. I don't like the red, but I like the coral. That's yeah, fine. Some nice little altissimas. And some lady palms. <laughs> really cute. Okay, begonias. These are looking good. Those are some nice looking hanging baskets. Oh, look at the tiny little pineapple. That stinking adorable. Okay, not a total bust. Got the impatience and the ginger. I'm gonna head down the street to another nursery though and see if they have any big begonias. Oh, oops. No, I was still recording. I don't think I mentioned that I was looking for some big begonias, but I would like to get another big dragon's wing begonia 
to plant in the Miami planters in the backyard. And there was, this is driving me nuts. I should have written it down. There was something else. I was like, I need to see if they're going to have this particular plant. I, I have no idea what it was. Cannot remember, but hopefully when I browse enough, it'll, uh, we'll see. I love this area here. There's, there's the next nursery, Greenscape, right there. They're the place I was just at right behind me. If you're in St. Louis, Doherty Ferry and Barrett Station, it's like four nurseries right here. Greenscape, Kirkwood Gardens, Sherwood's Forest, and Weethop, which they're not open all year, but still, like, you get, you get to do all the fun things in one little area. It's really nice. Have to remember, I am not allowed to leave here with any more palm trees. Don't need them. They exercise so much self-control in here. Look at these delphiniums. Aren't they beautiful? Shelby. I'm not, did you think I was going to read it to you? You can read it. Feel free to pause. <laughs> Ooh, hoo, hoo. who are you? Tattoo raspberry. That's beautiful. Nice Birkin. Big goldy eyes. Lots of, lots and lots and lots of nice looking house plants. You did it again. It's the, I got a few more things than I had intended on. I'm not going to go over all of it. Some things need to stay a surprise, but that just, I had to. I mean, look at them. I do find it curious that the picture on the tag is pink, yet not so much. Now, I'm going to do some more reading up on these, but I'm very happy with them. And then I got the... The impatience. I remembered the other thing I needed. It was, I wanted to get some more sweet potato. We'll talk about it. I had to phrase it like that. We were already talking about it, but when I get to that project, I'll go more in depth real quick. The punti is blooming. Those are beautiful. Love when the prickly pears get the flowers on them. Very nice plants. Okay, so quickly, here's what I got. I mean, you've pretty much seen it. The Shelby Delphinium, so beautiful. I got a couple of small Alpinia Zaremba Ferragatas. I need these for those Miami planters. If you don't know what I'm talking about, those are those down there. I haven't planted those two big planters up yet because I feel like I built it up too much and now I'm like, no matter what I put in here, it's going to be a disappointment. Sort of become like more of an anxiety thing than an excited thing. I just haven't really seen anything at the nurseries that's jumped out at me and been like, oh, I really want to mess with those. But I know that these would probably do well in there, so I grabbed a couple of those. Then some Cataranthus, which are just awesome. Basically a mini Vinca. Fun plants, those will be going in a planter in a different video, and the uh, impatience, which you already saw. The Hilo Beauty, which I, I've, I forgot I have one of these already, but you know what? I, I needed another one, I decided, after I already bought it. Fine, nothing wrong with that. It's sort of bromeliads. Again, when I get to that video, hopefully in a week or two, that will make more sense. And a couple more of the Strobilanthes, the Persian Shields. There's the tag. Strobilanthes is a weird word. Wouldn't expect everybody to know how to spell that. Accidentally, like, killed. One of the ones that I hadn't gotten planted yet, it just shriveled up and died. I was taking care of it like everything else, but uh, maybe it was just a weak one in the mix. One of these Neoregelias here, I want to use to put around the chain on that queen palm. The fireballs, which is what these are, that have the offshoots on them, they can take a good amount of sun. All of these here should be able to take a good amount of sun because I looked all of them up and they're all fireball mixes. It's not going to put them into direct sun though. The fireballs should be okay though. So I grabbed three of these. I'll pick out whichever one is the most full and when the Spanish moss comes in the mail, I'll get that wrapped up around that chain that's on the queen palm. So it'll be some Spanish moss with those fireballs coming off of me. You okay? A little bit warm? It's only like 78, 80. I'm actually kind of chilly. Mike once said put my hoodie on. So in here, the Super Tuny Vista Bubblegums, those are going to go down in the pot with the Alexander Palm. And I wanted to get more of the uh, Car Sweetheart Caroline Ipomias. Is that what they were? Sweetheart Lime. The Sweet Potato Vines from Proven Winners. These. I really like how these are working with these Super Tuna Vista Jazzberries here. So I would like to put those down over, I'm trying not to make y'all dizzy, on that end as well, in place of the Super Tuna Vista bubblegums. I've noticed when I'm sitting over here at the table and I'm looking out across the pool, just trying to appreciate the landscape, listen to the birds relaxing, these planters stand out to me way more than those, which is odd because, well, I mean, these have palm trees in them. I feel like these are much more dramatic, but it's the, it's the Vista bubblegums. They're, they're ruining it. They gotta go. Those are going to go in here. We're gonna be doing all this. I don't want you to talk about it too much. 
I want to get this planted up with something beautiful. There's not a lot of root space. Kind of the same problem as with the queen palm. When I was out at those nurseries, I was looking for like big hanging baskets of dragon's wings begonias that I could just like plop three of those in there. I didn't really see anything that stood out to me. And I also need to be careful because there are Pharaoh's mask colocasias in here. I want to make sure to not smother those. I don't want to put impatience in here. Like I, there's a lot going on with the impatience. There's the salmon, variegated salmon here, and then the regulars here, all the way over there, over there up there and all the planters and you know just got more to put on the other end i think something different in the container would be nice but i just i didn't see anything i think instead of doing things the traditional way where you know do a big project and everything's done in one swoop i don't think it's gonna happen some stuff put in over there in those containers get a few things in the other containers and then maybe next week or the week after i'll found some other things and can keep adding to it and that's i mean it's what most of us do with gardening it's just on the youtube we try and have a like a start and a finish all in one video for a nice, big, beautiful, dramatic reveal. But reality is that's not happening. I could have driven around to like three more nurseries. I don't feel like it. So I'm going to wait a few hours for the sun to move over, for the shade to hit over here. It's only gonna be a couple hours. May as well wait for things to get more shady before I start planting because it is supposed to warm up here fairly soon. And I want to, I want to stress the plants out as little as possible. So I'll be back. found them. It was one of those things where it's going to keep bugging me and I knew they had them here because I saw them a couple of weeks ago. I'm at Home Depot yeah, and figured that out from the obnoxiously bright orange cart. Some nice looking plants here. I really don't think I need anything else after what I've done today but I got, hey I got these. Hey, the world's a better place now. <laughs> We've been all over the place in this video. It's a vlog. This is what happens. It happens when you don't plan out your videos. That's that's what happened here. BB, how you doing? This, as much as I've been looking forward to sticking some impatience in these pots, it's not the most exciting thing. They're so tiny. There's not going to be like a big before and after, nothing like that. So I just don't see a reason to focus on that all that much. But you know what has been really bugging me are those petunias. Got to get those out of there. They're starting to settle in. They don't need to be in these pots anymore. You can kind of see here. I feel like they're already starting to encroach on those Supertunia Vista Jazzberries. This is, it's probably not gonna come out very pretty, but you know, it's Supertunia Vista Bubblegum. They're tough, they'll be fine. Pop that in there. Might need some more soil. I don't know, the hole's about the same size. No, that's good, look, easy. Thinking I might actually need to cut this impatient back. What do we think? It's got a lot of growth on the inside, so if I were to just cut those, then that would open it up and these plants would be able to fill out better and get out of here to get to the light before these, you know what I'm saying? Hate to do it, but they're all splayed out. So I think this makes the most sense. They're already starting to bush out from in there, so this is this is what's best. Ugh, I'm gonna miss the color. It's an impatient though. It'll be back in what? A week, if even? I don't know. Something like that. This isn't that's not supposed to be there. This goes somewhere else. And you can see this one, that's filled out even more. And I'm having the same issue here with this impatient, so I'm just gonna from the get get in here and give it a little trim because well it's in my way. Cutting those back, that's something I really oops, I missed one. There we go. That's something I really should have done when I planted those up, I think. They were pretty stretched out and leggy. Is this, is that stuck? I'm, I can get it. There we go. Better? Yes? No? I think so. It was just too much with the Vista bubble gum inside of those. I'm gonna do the other side. I have to like kind of almost get in the pool to do that. Check that out later. It's gonna look like this, but you know, opposite. Yeah, see? Just the same thing, but opposite. I think that that looks so much better. Don't you think that looks better? Just having like some nice big green foliage down there instead of all the color. Like I like all the color. It's nice. Color's fantastic. I just felt very out of balance. I like the way these look down here a lot. We've been through this. This is where I'm going to put those bubble gums. It's pretty much the perfect spot for them when you think about it. They can come over the edge. Turbo, what you doing? What you doing? What you get? Okay. They're vigorous growers. They'll cover up the edge of the pot. That's really all there is to it. I just carried this bag of potting soil down here by the side like an idiot a hole right in the edge that was dumb cheap slow release nothing special about it really don't want these too close to these ferrous masks that are in here i don't know if it's even on camera but i showed them to you earlier i think that the bubble gums might choke those out yeah maybe i mean they're pretty tough 
Maybe they won't, I'm not sure. I have this one right here that I think, uh, that should probably go maybe further down, because I was talking about not wanting to choke out these Pharaoh's mask colocasias that are in here, but if this is right, it's fine. They're generally sturdy plants. I think they can push through and not have too many problems. Ooh, I just pissed the heck out of one of those mud dauber wasps. All right, cool. That's an improvement. <laughs> it's nothing mind blowing, but a few weeks, those will come over the edge. You won't be able to see the pot anymore. That's all I really wanted there. And it's a nice pop of color. Yeah, that's much better. I like that. I like that green a lot more And the super tunias. Look at that. You can see them from all the way down here. Nice little cloud of pink dangling over the edge of that pot. All right, I need to water these in. It's getting late. I guess we'll pick up in the morning. I'm you know, like day three of doing nothing here. Had I mentioned that I'm kind of over these gecko attachments. I love the watering wand. This thing's great, but the actual, this thing down here, the quick connect thing is a pain to get on and off. <laughs> what you doing? You get a drink? And that totally defeats the purpose. I was standing down at the other end of the patio and I saw this gap right here and I was like, that's no, that's not acceptable. Not when it's that easy of a thing to fix. That's better. But you have to get on there and like really pinch and pull down on the piece. This one right here that my pinky's underneath. Maybe they're just old. They're only a year old and they're kind of pricey. And the only reason I was like, okay, they're pricey, but they'll last a long time. They're not broken. So I guess maybe I'm right about that, but sometimes it jams up. That's all I was saying. This one, I keep pulling on the weeds, trying to clear a spot and it keeps getting down in front of me. I realize it's because I set a seashell here in the pot. I don't really know why I picked that up. I'm not going to give it to him. That can go over there. Nah, that's got to stay over there. Sorry, Turbo. Turbo. No, no shell. That's a little oak trees coming up from in here, which means that chipmunks and squirrels have been busy getting those acorns planted. So to get this planted up, I'm really, I'm going to have to spend some time working in some little holes to get those impatience put in. I have creeping Jenny on the front. I forgot that I put that there as a perennial, but I also have a bunch of Alyssum I want to put. I'll make it work. It's, it's not a big deal. You can make this work. <laughs> Did you get your turtle? What do we think? I know, it's not mind-blowing. There just isn't much else that I think would work all that wonderfully in these containers with the light that this spot gets and the way the sun moves around, and particularly with how the light changes throughout this season. I forgot to fill this back in. There we go. That's better. So you may also notice that there's a creeping Jenny in the middle of the pot down there on the left and over here. Well, there's not. That's because apparently the creeping Jenny didn't come back in this pot. I look around and if I can find some more, I'm pretty sure I have some back here in the yard somewhere. And if I can find it, then I'll put it there in the middle just so that the two of them match. The more lobularia, the better, because it's just, oh, it smells so good in the morning, which is why I wanted it over here it was more for the scent, the fragrance. All right, pick back up in the morning. See what else there is to do out here other than just put some stuff away. Did I tell you, you, what are you doing? Turbo. I told you no turtle, not right now. All right, take the turtle. He is wound up, it's getting late. I'm gonna do some laps, maybe with the dog. I ever told y'all how much fun it is trying to swim laps with Turbo? That's so fun. When he gets into the rhythm of it, he's pretty good. He even spins around and pushes off the wall with me back and forth of just <laughs> pushing the dog out of the way. And when Toby's in the pool, he just wants to be held. He just swims up to you and you have to hold him. You just stand there in the water holding him. It's his favorite thing to do. Something he can do all day long. So if I had to pick between the two, if trying to get a workout, this is better. Kind of. I'm going to do some laps and think about those planters. Holy crap, look how the sun coming through shining on Shelby. Look at you, Shelby, looking like a snack. Twilight goddess flower, so shimmery and shiny. I had a point there and I don't remember what it was. No, nobody cares about the swimming. What, 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 was, what was I getting at? Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to take the night and think about ways to improve <laughs> what I'm working on out here. It's going to brainstorm some ideas because the ideas I've had for what I want to do with some of these planters, mainly the Alexander palm, and those two over there, it's just, it's not gonna work out. In each spot, the light just isn't right, or the uh, root balls are a little bit too tight in the containers to do anything elaborate. So it's gonna have to do some thinking. I mean, that's half the fun of all this gardening stuff anyways, right? Is planning things out. 10 laps. That's how many it took for him to leave me alone. Just an improvement. Finally figured out that after 10 laps, he's like, oh, you, you just, you're just gonna keep doing this just back and forth. That's all that's happening here. And things came a long way and I'm feeling like an idiot. Forgot to put this away. No better by now. He ate the last one. He'll eat the next one. I think I know what I want to do here now. Just a little 
background here, not that there hasn't been enough of that in this video with everything going on. I usually like to get really elaborate with what I plant here in the center pot, but because I'm trying to find a bigger pot to repot this, this, um, this thing's freaking huge, right? It needs a new pot. I just don't want to go overboard with anything that's more pricey. I'd like to just stick with pretty basic annuals, especially since I don't have a lot of soil space to work with here. So I think I'm just going to just repeat what I've been doing here in patience. Have a couple begonias to put in the background. That's That'll be good enough. I have the color across the top, the white from the Snow Princess down below, and I think that that will be nice. That should look good. Probably not gonna look great in this video because, you know, they're just now getting planted. In a few weeks, it'll be nice. Got the one canary wing in there. That was much easier than I thought it was going to be. I was talking about this pot being full of roots and how that could be a problem, but they're pretty loose. There's a good amount of soil up here that's easy to work with. See, these aren't they're not looking too hot. They've been sitting around for a while. I talked about this not in the last... Well, yeah, when, when did I talk about this? Annuals only stay nice in these nursery cans for a short amount of time. That's why I was trying to get so many things planted up a couple weeks ago. Wanted to get all those annuals that are over there around the hot tub planted up before things started to look bad. That's more than enough soil release. This root, that's not going to fit in there. But here's the thing with a lot of annuals. I know that was probably heartbreaking for a lot of people to see, but I guarantee you, it's not gonna skip a beat. Not the begonia, anyways. There are some plants I wouldn't do that with. But with begonias, they've never seemed to care. The tubers types, that would be a bad idea, but the dragon's wings, they're tough. It's not gonna hurt them. I, how am I thinking I'm going to get impatience planted right along the front of this trunk and have those alyssums here? In the, I mean, we can do it. We can probably do it. Don't know until we try, right? Just gonna dig in here and get a lot of that soil out. It's probably gonna take a long time. Turbo, you are not helping. There we go. Another generous amount of slow release. I've noticed with a lot of slow release fertilizers, if you don't use like way more than they tell you to use, which you know, we're not supposed to do, but it seems like if you don't, then well, then they just don't seem to do much. Is that going to be deep enough when I fill this in? A little bit further down. I am putting these much closer together than they really need to be, but I think that that will look better in the long run, especially because there's you know, a decent chance that hopefully I'll be getting a new pot for this palm tree here in a few weeks and I'll have to pull it all up anyway. So I'm not, I don't know, that's that's my line of thinking there. That and I'm feeling rather impatient. And impa no, the snow princess in there, another one. <laughs> and I get here into the middle, tight together. But like I said, I don't think it's all going to be there for all that long. Should I, caladiums? Just something with a different leaf shape since this is in the middle? I think so. I feel like there's no way I'm going to fit all of these. Can you see it? The camera's up close. A lot to try and fit in here, but you bet your ass I'm gonna try. These are the Summer Breeze Caladiums, aren't they beautiful? <laughs> Sorry about the toy. I keep taking that away from him and then I forget that he's a ridiculously tall Labrador and I need to put it someplace he can't reach it. There we go. Oh, those roots are good. I can loosen those up and make this fit in there, no problem. No, I want this one in the middle. Boy, the impatience, they'll poke through, they'll fill in, and this should get taller. The summer breeze, let me look at the tag. This one should get to 18 inches, so this will come up further and there'll be more space underneath there. And I'm going to do the white Christmas. There we go. I'm gonna put some of these in the back. These get even bigger, so it would be a better one to have in the background. White Christmas gets, I think, 24 inches, something like that. I feel like I've seen these bigger than 24 inches before, but we're just gonna go with that. We'll say 24 inches. There we go, see? He's able to make it all fit. Everything worked out fine. I'm gonna water these then. Here I should probably point something out, which is that you may know that the, like the Snow Princess Alyssum, the Lobulator, that's the white one that's coming over the front. There's three of those here. Those are typically listed for I think full sun to part sun. Whereas in patients, typically you see them sold as a shade annual. The same thing with the caladiums. This spot right here gets almost identical sunlight to my front porch where I have combined the Snow Princess Alyssum with just the regular impatience and they've always done really well. The Snow Princess will sometimes get kind of leggy and need a cutback. That's something they usually need at some point anyways during the growing season. It may seem like an odd mishmash of sun-loving plants and shade-loving plants, but with the spot, it's really bright morning sun and then shade throughout the rest of the day from like, I'd say, uh, probably noon and on. 
somewhere in there. And I based this decision, not just off this location being very similar to my front porch as far as the lighting goes, but also because I've had these Calatheas sitting down here for the last month and they're fine. There's a tiny bit of scorch on them, but if they're okay right here, the impatience and the caladiums, the ones that are listed for shade, will be great. I don't see them having any issues. However, it's that area, the snow princess, where it could be different. There's probably going to be more growth in this pot than in this one, and this one's going to have more growth than in this one because there's more sun over here than down there. But you just, in a weird spot like this, you just kind of got to make it work. The alternative is to use different plants for each pot. I wouldn't want to do that. This is good. Big improvement. Got some color, some fine texture from the alyssum. This area over here, we'll talk about this more next week, but this is kind of like my calm area with the fountain and I just don't want a lot of stuff over here, or a lot of noise. I like to focus on things that have nice foliage, nice fragrance like the alyssum. There's some gardenias and have it just calm. The calm spot. Doesn't look like it right now. Just wait till next week. I'm waiting for some things to come in and this is all things are it's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> I promise it'll be beautiful next week. Well I'm not going to promise it's supposed to be like 100 degrees next week so we'll see what gets done out here but it in theory the spot from like here and over is gonna be beautiful. I already think it looks a lot better. It looks nice. That fun fuzzy texture from the alyssum. And color. We've already been through this. Okay now I just need to finish up the Alexander planter. The Alexander pot. Y'all are gonna get really upset with me here in just a second. I'm so sorry. The Supertunia Vista bubblegums down here, <laughs> I'm not loving it. I know, probably seems ridiculous. They look nice, they're pretty. It's just there's, from the other end of the patio, there is so much color and pink down here. It's beautiful, but feels very out of place, especially because there's so much green and foliage on this side. There just isn't enough sun to get more of those sun impatience down over here. To remember, all these annuals I planted just, what, a week or two ago, those are gonna fill out. It's gonna be really colorful, and then it's gonna be like pink, pink, and just lots of color, which I'm normally very much into, but I just, I don't know, from the other end of the patio, I'm not really liking it. For a really long time, I've wanted to do a planter with some nice colocasia of some variety and just filled in around the base with some sort of sedum. This is lemon coral sedum. I can't do this right now because I don't think I have enough of them, but I think that just having this entire thing underplanted with just green would be more calm. They're just Vista bubblegums. Like, you see them all the time, see them all over the place. It's not a plant where I'm like, I need this front and center. It needs to be there. I would like for this to be more tranquil. Does that make sense? And the lemon coral sedum, this stuff right here, the tag says 12 inches. I have seen these get Massive. I think these will easily push 18 inches by the end of the season. And just wasn't that just that sea of fine texture green going across the top? It will probably eventually drape down to the to down, you know, below so it covers up the pot. It'll take it a while, but that's okay. I just I don't know. That's what I'm wanting to do here. I could go ahead and maybe just pull one of these out and alternate them around. I might do that and kind of have your cake and eat it too. We'll see. It's just something I'm thinking about. Comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on it. What I do know that I want to do in here is get a couple of heliconias in here because we need some height. These are the Petra heliconias. I started these during the winter time in the growth space. I had a few different ones to choose from. I'm going with the Petras because they stay smaller, like 20 to 24 inches high. And they should be a prolific bloomer. Bloomer. Overall, I think it's a variety that would just do well in this spot. Depending on the variety, the Sidericorum types, which is what this is, the ones that stay smaller, they tend to be pretty vigorous growers. If you get them into a soil blend that has a good amount of organic matter in it and a good amount of moisture retention, they will typically be pretty sturdy plants that will grow prolifically and flower. I would hope, I would imagine, that these should each fill out about each half of this pot by the end of the season. They should be about a foot taller with really nice looking orange flowers on them. Didn't want them to be too big because I have those Pharaoh's mask colocasias coming up back there, so I want them to be below those in the background. And then in the front, I have another colocasia that I think I'm gonna go ahead and pop in here that has some nice color to it. I know, that's probably annoying, back and forth all over the place. That's kind of the point of this video though. Walking and talking, thinking out loud. I like doing that sometimes. Helps explain the process. People can understand where I'm coming from with things and things aren't always planned out and just perfect, right? Gonna play around with it. The original plan with this planter was I, to put um, the sapphire gecko colocases in here. I have three of them that were going to go in here, but then those pharaoh's masks 
started to pop up. Wouldn't really enjoy how that would look because they're both colocasias that kind of deserve their own attention. I, don't, I, I wouldn't want them together. In the past, I've done those sapphire geckos, whichever one they are, I'll show them to you in just a second, on each side of this path and they looked awesome. So that's where those will end up going. Nothing mind blowing. It's gonna take things time to fill in, but I think that this will look pretty cool come the end of the season. And I'll make my mind up over the weekend about what to do, whether or not to keep the petunias or go with the sedums. I said, I like the Super Tunia Vista bubblegums. Perhaps they're just played out for me. They get planted up every year, so I'm just not impressed with them anymore. They are an awesome plant. Lots of power to them. They grow and grow and grow. Super sturdy. They would fill this in in just a matter of weeks, but I don't, I don't necessarily know if I want this like just overflowing in a matter of weeks. I think just a nice carpet of green on the top that comes over part of the edge of the container would look really nice. And it won't take away from what's planted above because the heliconias, I want those to stand out. The pharaoh's mass colocasias, I'm going to want those to stand out. And then in the very front, I have another colocasia that's it's not really rare, but it's more on the pricey side. I, I, did, I did a thing and some people will be upset about it. And that's fine. You can be. It's the redemption black foliage with pink veining. Very pretty elephant ear, and I wanted that to be a centerpiece in here. I think the sea of green would look nice, but comment down below. Let me know what you think. It's hard to go wrong with the Vista bubble rooms. No matter what I do, that's going to look nice, but I think it could look better. Jeez. That time of year, air show's coming up. Had a lot of fun and interesting looking planes flying over the house over the last few days. So I think that that's it. I need to do a few other things, but got a lot of stuff planted, went through the whole thinking process. I think I covered everything. I did forget to mention, I threw in a handful of compost around everything I planted in that pot, especially around the uh, colocasias and the heliconias. They like that richness and that moisture retention. The potting soil I use is pretty good, but I just don't think it's quite rich enough. Maybe you can tell better from down here. The lighting's not all that great. A plant, it's not gonna stop. I'm gonna have to wrap this up. That's gonna start to get on my nerves trying to film and having fighter jets flying all over the place. It's fun to watch. Look, it's like I feel fortunate to be able to sit in the backyard and like see the blue angels cruising around over my house. It's neat, but that, not right now. They go in circles and circles and circles. Can you tell from here? It's just off balance. I feel like having the Vista bubble gums in there is really going to pull away from the banana trees and the impatience. And I have some Schuttgart cannas, which are gorgeous. Those are planted back there. I don't want Super Tunia Vista bubble gums to be the spotlight. That make more sense. All right, let's move on to some plant updates. A little bit of fun walking around here. White lava, colocasia, look at that. Opening up its first variegated leaf or its first heavily variegated leaf, that's fun. I also noticed that there are a whole bunch of, I'm not gonna be able to find them now, of course. We're just seeing all the weeds with the burnouts killing off. Where'd they go? It's hard to see. There's a lot of Tretiscantia that I planted last year that's coming back up. So this is, that's gonna be really busy with a lot of stuff going on in it. Lots of blooms on the hibiscus and the bulletin. Look at all those. Look at that. Look nice and come inside for just a moment. So many flowers. You say hi, Cosmo? Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. A favorite orange one opening up. Things are just filling in nicely. Starting to take off. Looking good out here. Oh, and the delphiniums. So technically, I got these to plant at somebody else's house, but I don't know. I'm pretty attached. I'm gonna have trouble giving these up. I'm gonna have to find a spot for at least one of these or I'll go back and get my own. Flower stalks on these are so big and girthy. I'm not used to seeing that with delphiniums and they're good for cutting. Did I ever read the description? Oh, I said take a screenshot because I was feeling lazy. It's a cutting gardener's dream. Well branched, strong, sturdy stems mound up from frilly mound of green foliage, shawl spikes and flowers, lavender, blah, 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 blah. Blooms in early summer and continues till fall. That is fantastic. I'm going to keep blooming and blooming on those nice short stalks. This is the electric blue gecko. This is what I was talking about to put underneath the uh, Alexander plot that I'm not going to put under there anymore. They uh, look similar to the black coral, which is just, a, there's one over there. It's a little black colocasia. You can't even see it. They get the big colocasia leaves. They look black and they have a sheen to them. It kind of varies throughout the day, but it's a metallic-y blue sheen, sometimes kind of purple. It's a really neat looking plant. I don't normally like dive into a lot of the black plants, but I think they're nice to have outside for contrast. And their appearance changes throughout the day, which I think is pretty neat. Do you see, look, I just saw this forecast. It's like summer's getting here next week. 90, I like how there's a cactus on Sunday that says 90, very hot. That means it's gonna be dry. That doesn't happen here very often. And then just hot and humid. <laughs> and days where it's like 99 and 100. I would take 100 degrees and dry over 75 and humid 
any day. I used to love it, uh, not anymore. More flowers on the ginger, looking pretty. I think that is everything. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with all the back and forth, the very quick run to the nursery. I expect some more of that next week. I mean, I will have made my mind up on a lot of the things that I was talking about in this video next week, but get to get creative again over here, which is always fun. I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Hey, Turbo. Hey, baby. Yeah, I know, I need to get that pot glued back together. I'm missing a piece. I think it's like buried under the dirt back there somewhere. I'm gonna try and find that. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to everybody. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on Oh, this is, I meant to come over here to show what the canary wing begonias look like when they get a little bit bigger. When I was planting up the thing down there, they have the nice lime green foliage. That was the idea. I have that lime green foliage with the lighter red, almost orange, but red flowers, and then the white and the you get it. I think that it's a good color combo. Should look good. Bye-bye.